I tried to defend him. Rangers, Dodgers, uh, can't defend this. The Kyle Hendricks thing is a real problem, folks. You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day alongside Sam Olver. I'm Matt Cozy. Sam and I are lifelong fans taking our passion into discussion with you on all things Cubs. Thank you for being part of the show and making Locked On Cubs your first listen today. And the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day, like the video and comment anything below. And today... Uh, the Cubs lost the series to the Padres following a blowout loss. This was following a uh, bad loss Monday, a win Tuesday, and then uh, what what ended up being uh, a blowout they could not recover from on Wednesday. And the notable thing here, Sam, was, was Kyle Hendricks. Uh, there's a couple questions that I would like to discuss and – I think at this point we we need to, and yeah, I know at one point I think you're on record saying that he's your favorite player from yep. the championship era, correct? And that means a lot. And so for you and others that are now witnessing this, um, I'm curious what you think. And yeah. uh, you know, I have his stats in front of me and all that, but <laughs> but where are you at with Hendricks right now? Because uh, he's given up just a lot of contact. Yeah, well, I think it's important to mention that you know this about me. I have the ability to put away nostalgia. Uh, um, right, you know, right. My, my, my defense with Kyle Hendricks has nothing to do with the fact that I like him. I mean, I love Chris Bryant, you know, when it was time, yeah, to, you yeah. know, when, when it was time for him to kick, you know, kick rocks and, and, and move on, it was time, you know. Um, he's batting 111 as we speak. So, um, oh, with Hendricks. My, but 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 to your point, I did defend him with Hendricks. It was about the fact that he looked like himself last season. And so going into this season, right. he opened up against the Rangers. He opened up against the Dodgers. So I just said, all right, let, let, let's see what happens. This was a much better, I thought, uh, judging point for him. And he was absolutely atrocious this evening and he is starting to look like the Hendricks of 2022 and 2021 <sighs> with some of the underlying things. First of all, th- this was the full Kyle Hendricks experience, right? In the uh, second no inning, in the second inning, people are going to say, well, he had a lot of bad luck, but unfortunately those runs still count folks. And, and w- part of his, his MO is even though when he's great, that, that bad luck, like, when the ball's in play, that's why strikeouts are great. That's why Dylan Cease is going to make a lot of money because the ball's not in play. Then he started not locating the third time through, and it got really ugly after Bush rallied. But here's the key point, Matt, Until you, before you start getting into the statistics and stuff. The problem for me with Hendricks now, right. you know, first of all, I don't think – we'll get to this. I don't think he's going to be done yet. It's not there yet. It's April 10th, no, but it's no. off to a bad start. However – it's the dollars attached to his name. Oh, he, okay. He opted into a the, the team opted into a deal worth sixteen million dollars. That's Seth Lugo money. That's uh, Michael Waka money, money, right? And and you know, at sixteen million, you can't just be a fifth starter that gets through five innings and and, and gives up three earn. And we say, hey, you did your job as a fifth starter. Sixteen million is a large chunk of change. You got to be pretty dang good, man. And and when you look up now, Hendricks is getting 16. Tyone's getting 17. Smiley's getting nine. I'm no mathematician, but that's about $42 million to guys that haven't even really done anything to help you in the starting rotation yet. That stuff stings because we know Ricketts has a line of, uh, of a budget, and he would if those guys aren't on the payroll, you're going to get a Montgomery. You're going to get somebody else. So, so with me – it's uh, it's it's not as much about Hendricks. Could he figure it out? It's the fact that we paid him where he basically had to be who he was last year for that money to make sense. And it just doesn't look like that through three games. No, it doesn't. And, you know, even in the, the early part of the, uh, the game, 
there was the the whole weak contact billboard. You know, right. he was giving up hits that were 65 MPH. Like, I think you probably drove faster than some of these hits he allowed today. Yeah, and I was uh, driving during that. You time. know, if you if you uh, were driving today at all, I wasn't. Uh, Pat Hughes ref was referencing a movie that he watched last night during that inning. Oh yeah, he's in he's in top form, I guess. Yeah. Uh, great. So, uh, but but then it, it it starts to get more than that. You mm-hmm. know, it, it, that's what happened against the Dodgers, did it not? Hundred percent. Dink and dunk, and then they start to square it up, and the next thing you know, it's seven to two. And that's the game's over at that point because, um, with all the issues in the pen and 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 things like that, which we're going to revisit later in the show. Um, so there's really two main questions here that I have exiting this start for Hendricks, and it's not that is is school out because I thought about making that the title or the thumbnail, <laughs> and I don't think that's fair. I, I don't think that's fair right now. No. Uh, class has it's not a, been dismissed. It's a great he- title, uh, though, if we get there. <laughs> oh, yeah. But what are the expectations for him at this point in his career, and should we be worried? And when you allow 17 runs and five homers on 26 hits in 12 and two-thirds, the answer is yes, we should be worried. And the answer is, well, the expectation is that he's a number five. He's a clear number five. That's all we should expect. His ERA, if it evens out, is going to start with a four. If it doesn't even out, then maybe maybe we are talking about the worst case scenarios. But he is a number after three starts, he's he looks like a number five or a number four. You know, we we talked about him as a number four before. Well, after three starts, he looks like a double A pitcher. But okay. yes, well, yeah, like it, a number ten or something. Yeah, you think it's gonna you think it's gonna normalize to your point where if it starts with a four, that's a number five starter. And the issue here is that do we all understand that he's the Cubs number one starter right now? Yeah. In what way though? I mean, Imanaga well, I, uh, in the depth chart, right? Well, Imanaga to me okay. through, through, yeah. But here's the thing. So I agree with everything you said, and I go back 26 to my six hits. And so here's the thing. Here, here, here's here's the show right here with, in terms of Hendricks, and I don't even right. think it needs to be expanded. If if he does figure it out and becomes a decent four or five starter, they right. didn't pay him like that. They paid him like a two three, and right. that's the problem. Like because right. like that's what people are gonna say. Oh well, you know. Hendricks went six. He gave up three. That's solid for a five starter. But you didn't give him five starter money. If if he, if he opted out of that, and you guys negotiated and said, "Hey, we're going to give him seven mil." Then by all means, pitch like a fifth starter. Yeah, what but, happened with that? Right. Why? There was and, never and any reporting I, on that. No. So they reported on a. I believe it was, was a it? Sunday. I was watching the Bears game that that the <gasps> team picked up the option, and then you and I spoke briefly right. on the show. You and I spoke briefly that if they pick up that expensive an option, they're probably right. going to do it a second year with like a cheaper a restructure. deal, like a restructure, and they never right. did it. And Why, that, and that, yeah, I don't know. And that is yeah, where the frustration t- to me comes in. Uh, but he's got, he, yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? He's got to be better, and he's got to compete. His next start's not going to get any easier. I believe it's going to be in the desert. And, uh, <laughs> oh gosh! Yeah, so he's could he be start... skipped and pitch against the Marlins? Well, well, they don't, you know, t- with Tyone being out. No, it would be nice to skip him and put him. Against no, it the would. Marlins. Yeah, but I just don't Let's know. Let's try to pitch. sketch that out. Maybe we could bring up Wisniewski for that. Oh uh, yeah, that, no, honestly, I laugh, but that would be a better option. Well, maybe for an inning or two. Have how about how you have against the D backs one of the games, you have nine pitchers. One yeah, brain. And, and you know, <laughs> um you know, Quas gave up another run tonight. Oh, he looks horrible. <laughs> are they are they no, but seriously. No, I, I want to ask you. No, I want to ask they, are you. Are they not gonna make a roster move? No, Friday? I want to ask you. I want to ask high. you because because you're Mr. Logical 40 man roster. A 40 man roster, glass half full half guy. Full. Is it a is it I got a, a bit, smoothie right here? Is it a bit perplexing that he's just still on this club? Perplexing. Not a, yeah. no, not a bit. Not yeah. a bit. It's perplexing. 
And by the way, his nine ERA does not do him any justice. Right. He's had a Doesn't couple hundred runs. Support him remaining no. on the team. No, no, but it should be like a nineteen. I mean, he's he had a, you know <laughs> okay. that, that oh, those under justice. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, because the unearned runs, you know, with, yeah, right, with Swanson. Right. I mean, that wasn't like a routine play with Swanson. I mean, you know, <laughs> so he, you know, this is. You know, so but whatever. Why would it is he what still is. be here? I'm I'm confused by that. They need not only do they need arms, but they need someone that is fresh and hasn't pitched every day and got crushed. And, and Lord knows, Palencia doesn't look like a dependable option. No, and and he, and you know, he pitched Sunday. I thought fine. He, every everybody gets excited after one good one appearance. Start. And, well, no, it, when we get excited, the the trap we fell in last year was we actually had people get excited. With their triple A outings. Right. <laughs> that was the problem. Right. Listen, it is what it is. The Kyle thing, I, look, hand up. I defended him through two. I said that this would be the outing, and I'm with you guys. It's a problem. I'm curious to see what he says in the post game. Oh, yeah. And we'll, 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 we'll keep an eye on him going forward. But, um, you know, bad outing. Uh, unacceptable, really. All right. Five, a review of the uh, of all three games then uh, coming up right after this. Welcome to Policy Genius to the show. Oh, yeah. Another partner here on Locked On Cubs. Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money so you can provide your family with financial safety starting today. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year at $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same-day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help you talk through it. They have a team of award-winning agents who will walk you through the process step-by-step, -step. easily compare quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks, to find your lowest price, check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on MLB or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on MLB. And eBay Motors, Sam. Did you get oh. my message? No, no, this is all you, man. eBay I, Motors, yes. passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your car alive. Like, for example, you know, can the Cubs keep this team alive right now? Right. They're in a right. lot of trouble. <laughs> okay. Um, eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one car, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash, with all the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your car alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. <laughs> the Cubs play the Mariners. The Mariners have a nickname. I think it's the Trident or something. What? Something stupid like that. At 8.40 p.m. Central Friday. And you can hear every pitch of the Cubs hometown broadcast on Sirius XM. By searching Cubs on the SXM app. Yeah, I think it's like Trident, right? Like the sword? Like the gum? No. No, not the gum, but that was funny. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought I've seen that from the Locked On M's guys, honestly. True to the Trident. Anyway, um, yeah, my fault on that. I, I got I'm you on the saying, next one. And, and to the, is that field, which I think was Safeco Field? It's something different now. It's something different. And does that have a roof? Or is it open so. air? I don't know. I don't watch much Seattle baseball. Yeah, I just I couldn't remember when I was trying to think today. Is there rain in the forecast? Or so well, it's Seattle's a place where it rains constantly. Right, right. Well, frequently, right. I should say. 
Anyway, um, so uh, a big three game, uh, uh, you know, series here uh-huh. that we got beat. Um, Leach will be there. So. For me, for me, Matt, this game, you know, we always talk Go about Cubs. this off, off the air. There's an old baseball cliche. I think you like it and I like it as well. It's not exact, but it's a cliche, right? It's you win 60, you lose 60. What do you do with the other 40, right? And and this was one of those games Wednesday yes. night. This was one of those games Wednesday night that that felt like a throwaway game. You know, not, not a throwaway, but just like one that you just flush. The, the way it went, you yeah, just flush it, was it, a, it was you a, move on. They now, got were crushed you, today. Where you and I have a disconnect is you take a sip of a breakfast smoothie at 845 at night. Where you and I have a disconnect is... We've had a weird schedule. To me, this game stung a little bit because we gave away the opener. Now, so so I think a lot of people, you know, I'm seeing all the comments, oh, Cubs for this. I actually think the Cubs are in fine shape, 7-5 and five through 12, to your point. Um, this was always going to be a tough series with the way the matchups played out. Darvish is good. Musgrove's good. Cease is, is, is terrific. Um, this is a tough trip. We talked about a 4-5 uh, trip. It re- no, it really is. But when you're up eight nothing in game one, you start thinking about winning two out of three. So when you lose this game, it's just more of a confirmation of, ooh, man, I wish we could have got that one. Um, but but overall, this game feels like a like a flush and move on for me. And 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 I guess the series in general as well. Yeah, I think the emphasis on Monday's loss this early in the season in a grander picture means that and, and by the way this isn't really my argument isn't as positive as you're gonna think okay mm-hmm. Monday's loss and and it continue to emphasize it to me means that we did not learn from last year now what stinks about that is that they finished one game back in the standings technically two games because of the tiebreaker with the d-backs but we have now litanies of experience of doom and gloom. Sure. And in the grand scheme of that experience, ultimately, I think we can say because of the grocery list of games, they didn't earn their way in. And so when I look at, and that was looking at 162. Right. Now, of course, it ebbed and flowed during the year. But I think at this point, as we really pivot into the 24 campaign, I can't bring myself to go there when starting to make definitions. And I think that's where my problem lies, is is that sometimes we easily get caught up in making definitions, in this case, 12 games in, and there are seven and five. And so I would rather make a definition maybe after the, the first 32 like we, right. we, we talked about, uh-huh. um, you know, I, I said 17 and 15, you said 16 and 16, mm-hmm. and that was actually before the steel injury. So now right. there's like kind of like a steel curve. Can, um, can I interject? Yeah, it's a good spot. I, I think you're misunderstanding what I'm saying. Okay. I'm. Th- this is not one of those losses I'm going to talk about and go in July and go, hey, April, or or reference it. It's right right now we're talking about the series against the Padres. Right. And to me, that loss, most times when you play a series against a good opponent, you're going to have one game where you control that you should probably get. They're going to have a game that they should probably get, and there's a toss-up. We, in my opinion, we won the toss up. We gave away the game we should probably get. So when you're analyzing the series as a whole, I think it's irresponsible not to say, hey, that game basically was the series. Now, I think you're right. right if we, we wouldn't be learning our lesson from last year if after Sunday's game against Arizona, I'm still talking about it. But okay. to me, to me, in a three day stretch, this ha- this didn't happen Monday. It's not July sixteenth, and this happened April tenth, or whatever the day is. This, to me, that Monday game defined this series because you even said okay. it yourself. You didn't feel very good about Dylan Cease and Kyle Hendricks, correct? Oh, no. oh gosh. No. So that's why you wanted, and and I agree. I had the Cubs losing two out of three. Excuse yourself, yes. but we. We had a an opportunity to win this series, and now okay. the counter the so, counterpoint. When you say missed opportunity, do you mean the three game series? 
Yeah, I just mean these three. It's okay. three series. Okay. I'm not – I've learned but my I miss, lesson. I, I'm misinterpreting that. Yeah, I, I've learned my lesson. I'm not doing the old stuff of, oh, we blew this, so we're looking back at this. I learned my lesson from last year. I waved the white flag June 6, folks. I'm not doing that again. I'm just saying it doesn't well, matter. Well, I did on July 3rd. I'm I'm just saying it's it's not April if April or September no matter what it is when you blow an eight run game in game one of the series and then you lose the finale I feel like you have to at least just say hey that was probably where the series was lost. Okay. That's yeah. So then. Oh, what was that? I said that's all I'm saying. Sorry if I, I lost. Okay. You. Yeah, and I I think then you know maybe it was uh we got caught up in the language a little bit. Yeah, well, um, well, texting, you know, texting. I think they could make up for it. Well, of course. All it takes is one late comeback win, and then it washes it out. But that's that's the mistake that I'm not even going to make because it's not about the rest of the season. Listen, I watched the Pirates yesterday blow or a two-run lead tonight. Maybe, maybe we could say the rest of the trip. Yeah, it's just, to maybe. me, to me, up in the right-hand corner, segment two, it says Cubs-Padres. The Cubs-Padres series, to me, was defined by Monday's collapse. That's it. We move on, and we go okay. play in Seattle. Well, all right. Well, then I you should change. Uh, I'll change the graphic in, in Canva then to Sam Belichick because that's new. That's new for you. To say on to Seattle is new. I'm going to have <laughs> to get used to it. If you really mean on to Seattle, I'm on, well, I'm uh, on, like, I'm like on, Coach Belichick, then fine. But I'm on to Seattle, but, but, acknowledging that we blew an opportunity in San Diego. But for you, but but for you, and I'm saying the universal you, not Sam Olber. But for you to to, to keep doing this retroactive record, no, but I'm not doing that. that. People are going to do, but people it, will. Yeah. Oh well, they should be eight and four. No, you can't do that. Well, I should be. No, Brad Pitt. Well, well I don't know about that, but I. I know I, that, and and listen, that's and where guess I, what? I can't live like that. I no, can't. No, I no. I can't do it anymore. And that's <laughs> and that's where I completely agree with you. And going into this 2024 season, I'm going to do a better job. Notice how I haven't really mentioned opening day. That wasn't a great loss, you know. Well, that's true. Up. You haven't. No, because because you can't do that, or it becomes a headache. This is just okay. referencing. Hey, we lost the series because of Monday, and it was historic. And oh, by the way, these people that are saying well, you know, it was that a bad loss. Well, it's a story. No, it's historic's the word. And, okay. <laughs> and and you just lost on Wednesday. You just did the same thing on Wednesday. You just found a way to win that game. So you've right. had two crazy collapses in five days. You have to address it. And um, it's well, done. they haven't because they they have made they, they've made zero roster moves. Zero. Right, but I. I do think you're right in the sense in the short that term. The, the the seven and five, eight and four thing, that stuff always sticks out in April because you just don't have a lot of games. Right. Um, and, 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 you know, they're hopefully it hasn't happened yet. I don't believe the Cubs have a come from behind victory yet. Um, but th there will be some wins that balance this out and you move on. But like I said, it's just Monday's game for me to find this series. It's done now. Um, that this Wednesday's loss was about Kyle Hendricks. The offense was due to struggle. I was hoping, I don't know if you saw Michael my Bush hit a ball to Mexico though. I thought that they would give Suzuki a day today. It's such a bad matchup with cease. And they, and I knew they were going to give one of their regulars off a day. Yep. It just, they decided to do it with Horner and, and he looked, he really struggled today and the offense cease is tough when he's on, he's tough. And so it, it, it was just a, it was a non, a non, uh, a non-frustrating defeat in the vacuum for Wednesday. Just is what it is. Well, because quick math, this would have been only the third game out of 12 in which they didn't score first, I think. Right. And they did. And I, I got to say, I was, I was actually, I, I did a Jimmy John's delivery situation. So I was picking up oh, the food <laughs> when I got, when I got the notification that Bush hit a Homer and I was, learn, I mean, haven't you learned from your past experiences with that company. Well, let's, yeah, let's just, you know what I mean? Um, you know, quick delivery. Sorry. And so, so, uh, and I got really excited and then, you know, Kyle, uh, you know, did it. Yeah. Surprise. Yeah. It, it, it unraveled a bit. All right. We're going to close out with a, uh, around the NL central segment. We haven't done that yet. So we're going to, uh, do that for the first time about a dozen games in, uh, right after this. 
Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, a great partner here on Locked On Cubs. The sports calendar is loaded, and FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action because right now new customers get $200 in bonus bets. With any winning $5 bet, that's $200 you could use to bet on MLB, NBA, NHL, and so much more, including the Masters, which takes place beginning Thursday down yeah. in Augusta, Georgia. And so there's plenty uh, of activity on FanDuel right now. Also, Sam, as a press time here, uh, mm-hmm. FanDuel still, uh, you know, with the uh, Cubs, uh, they have the NL Central uh, Cardinals uh, plus 210, Cubs plus 220. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's the update. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel, the official partner of Locked On Cubs. All right, let's take a look at the NL Central as of recording time. Um, Pirates are in first place. They're 9-3. and three, And, you know, I actually just want to stop there just briefly because they started 20-8 and eight last year. Wow, it was, that, it was that high, huh? Yes. But they look like a better team. And you pointed yeah. that out, right? Yeah, I thought before the season they would be better. I, I don't think they're 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 going to win this division. I just think that they're they're better. Yes, they're better. They're definitely better. Um, and and I'm curious to see if they level off. You know. And, yeah. Well, well, at some point they're they're not going to be a nine and three team all year. Well, do they get out to a twenty and eight start? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, um, Brewers seven and three, Cubs seven and five, Reds six and five, Cardinals six and seven. Yeah, so and, uh, that's that's the so, standings right now. So here's my quick division ten game update. Um, I have good news and bad news. Okay. Good news is, and I texted you this today. I think the Cubs are a better team than St. Louis. I just do. Um, I, I think yeah. for St. Lu- for St. Louis to win this division, they need Arenado and Goldschmidt to basically be their peak selves, and I just don't know if that's in there anymore. Yeah. Um, wow. and, and I think the Cubs are better than them. The concern okay. is is that I don't think there's really a bad team in this division. Um, I don't like what I'm seeing, and this is a compliment to him, but obviously this is from a Cubs perspective. I don't like what I'm seeing from Yelich, who hit another home run tonight. They're blowing out Cincinnati 7 Meaning that he's playing really well. He, yeah, he's playing really yeah. well. And, mm-hmm. you know, if he hits like that, they're tough. I ultimately don't believe that the Brewers have enough pitching to stay the course. That time will tell on that. We'll see with Pittsburgh, but but I, I felt like this before opening day, and I feel like at 12 games in, the Chicago Cubs should win this division. Uh, they, they are the best team on paper. They have been set back for sure with Steele, Tyone, and Merriweather. Those are three absolutely gigantic injuries. But so far, through 12 games, they've stayed the course. Their heads are still very much above water. Those guys will come back, and I ultimately think that they are the best team in the division. But... Um, I am watching Pittsburgh closely. I'm watching Milwaukee. Um, Cincinnati's not a team. We, we did an NL Central preview, folks, that we didn't unfortunately get a chance to post. Um, and in that preview, I I, I talked All about All the Pittsburgh. hosts were there. Yeah, I talked about Pittsburgh not finishing last. Um, St. Louis, I acknowledge they have a lot of upside because of their players. The team that I was down on, and I still am, and I was last year. I just don't, I don't, I don't believe in the whole Cincinnati thing, okay. especially, especially with McLean being hurt. I mean, it's just a huge thing for them. So That's a you know, big I loss. Look, I look at St. Louis. I we'll, we'll see what happens with Pittsburgh and Milwaukee. But overall, I think the Cubs are going to be all right. I think the Cubs are going to be all right. Just keep staying the course, get through this month, get healthy, and figure out uh, uh, what to do with the bullpen situation. We'll be back Friday with Ty Lewin, who will be a guest with us once a month during the season. We're going to do a Friday episode and preview Cubs Mariners, but then also Ty will be with us too. Uh, put a little emphasis on the prospects and give us Mark some updates. Calendars. Apple TV Friday night. What? No way. A- Apple TV. I, how did I not know that? Yeah, so that means I'll be watching no. through satellite. Nope. Nope. Not doing it. <laughs> uh, maybe I will. Uh, Saturday's matchup. Or no, Saturday's the most favorable matchup, I think, for the Cubs. But you got to well, wait till Friday. To yeah, go we're going to wait till Friday. We're going to wait till Friday. Okay. 
All right, Cubs Mariners preview and more. And uh, thank you so much for checking out this edition of Locked On Cubs. You give us 20 to 30 minutes. We'll give you all things Cubs with a laugh or two along the way. Be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube, smash the like button for the algorithm, and leave a five-star review on Apple, Spotify, everywhere you get your podcast. If you ever wanted to leave a review on Apple that is five stars, now is the time because we are consistently in the top 20s of that chart on baseball in the world. And that is not all about listens. It's also about reviews and recent activity, recent reviews. Um, so a surge of reviews probably means a little bit of a surge in the charts there uh, as well. He's Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. This is Locked on Cubs.